and thanks to at home for staying with us this hour. Okay, this was uh, remarkably. This is a this is an incredible time to have footage like this, but this is real footage from 1935. Look at this. The streets of Houston, Texas, the whole city turned into a maelstrom of flood. People clinging to roofs and awnings. A hundred residential blocks and 12 business streets inundated, raging floodwaters 12 feet deep. Suburbs like an inland sea, clinging for life to a tree. Life saving by lifeboat, castaways on rooftops. Like a rescue at sea, people taken out of windows. A hundred thousand acres flooded, two millions in damage, a score of lives lost. In the heart of Houston, guests in a hotel are marooned without food for 40 hours. A cable is rigged between electric light poles, an aerial line to carry supplies. All this was caused by a tremendous downpour, 15 inches of rain. Buffalo Bayou runs through the heart of Houston. It rose seven inches an hour. And when the bayou does that, Houston is in for a flood. This one, the worst and wildest Houston has ever had. That was 1935 in Houston, Texas. And as you heard the announcer say there, all that was caused by 15 inches of rain. What Houston tonight is coping with is more like 50, 50, 50 inches of rain. As of today, this storm in Houston has produced the single largest rainfall amount from a single storm that has ever been recorded in the continental United States. When Texas broke that record today, it surpassed the previous record, which had stood since 1978, which was also a storm that hit Texas. Texas has a history, a, a geographic destiny to be the target of major tropical storms in this country that can be incredibly damaging and that in particular can cause huge flooding. But after that gigantic flood in Houston in 1935, uh, and actually, that one in 35 had followed another catastrophic Houston flood just six years earlier in 1929. After it happened twice in six years, by, after 1935, Houston was so fed up that they decided to make a significant change to how that city could cope with these kinds of challenges. In 1938, they passed the Rivers and Harbors Act in Texas. The Rivers and Harbor Act. And that created, among other things, the Harris County Flood Control District. And in the 1940s, that local authority in Harris County, where Houston is, uh, and the Army Corps of Engineers, they built two gigantic dams far out west from central Houston. They built these two dams to hold back big reservoirs in what was then a, a, a couple of unpopulated corners of Harris County and Fort Bend County. Today, those areas are no longer unpopulated areas. Housing development and suburban sprawl has pushed people that far west from Houston and beyond. But those two dams are still there. One of them is 11 miles long. One of them is 13 miles long. And when the storms still inevitably come and the rain falls and the rivers rise in southeast Texas, those two dams are still at the heart of how Houston copes. The two man-made reservoirs that build up behind those dams that they built in the 1940s, those are still what protects Houston from the uncontrollable inundation of flood water. And those reservoirs are now famous nationwide because of what's happening in Houston which this, with this largest rainfall event in U.S. history. The two reservoirs behind those two dams, they're called the Attics Reservoir and the Barker Reservoir. Today, the attics started overflowing this morning. It's the first time that's ever happened at the attics reservoir. Uh, the other one, the Barker Reservoir, they thought that that might start overflowing tomorrow. Authorities now say they expect that actually to happen tonight. And everybody's been reporting for the last couple of days now um, on how authorities had to make this very difficult decision in Houston to relieve pressure, re relieve the buildup of water in those res reservoirs by allowing water to be released downstream. And of course, downstream is Houston. And so those releases worsened the already devastating flooding downstream in Houston and its western suburbs. But now it's actually a different matter. Now it's the reservoirs overflowing and so it's no longer a, ma a matter of deciding to let the water out of those reservoirs now it's just getting out on its own regardless of what humankind chooses to do with it again the attics reservoir already started overflowing the barker reservoir is expected to start overflowing tonight 
Tonight, this giant storm will make landfall for the second time. It's had this unusual and sort of cruel pattern. Harvey came ashore Friday night, parked itself over Texas for the duration of the weekend, and then went back offshore. Tonight or early tomorrow, the storm will come back again out of the Gulf and make landfall for a second time. We're told to expect that at the Louisiana-Texas border. Now, the length of time this storm spent hunkered down over this region is absolutely key to understanding the magnitude of its devastation. How much of an impact it will ultimately cause, how much damage it will ultimately cause, and how hurt the people of Houston will be by what has just happened to them. In a couple of minutes, we're going to be talking about the shelter conditions that people are facing in Houston tonight as they continue to ride out the storm that is not done yet and where the floodwaters are not yet receding. But even apart from the issue of how the, the human population of Houston is coping in this Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, fifth day of this crisis, with what's happened here today, it's become clear that while it's amazing that they are already suffering through their fifth day of this, the worst may be yet to come in a few very specific ways. Um, there are a few critical things to be watching tonight and into the overnight and into tomorrow morning in terms of how bad this is and how bad this is going to get. One of them, the things to watch, obviously, is the amount of rain, the amount of water that continues to fall. We will be watching those 70-year-old dams that are holding back those now giantly overfilled reservoirs west of Houston. All right, the, the, the Army Corps of Engineers says that the dams holding back those reservoirs are not at risk of failure. They want people to be clear that the uncontrolled release of water from the reservoirs is not the same as the dam breaking. The dams are fine. These reservoirs are still intact. They're just too full. That said, other critical infrastructure that was protecting parts of southeast Texas uh, has failed today. The Brazos River runs uh, here through Brazoria County, which is a beautiful part of Texas, right between Houston and the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, Brazoria County put out this all capital letters exclamation point message today uh, as, this country's re as that county's residents were waking up to another day of the storm. As you can see there, the levee at Columbia Lakes has been breached. Get out now. That message from Brazoria County this morning. This is a levee on the Brazos River in Brazoria County. When that levee breached, the county could not have been more clear in that instruction or more urgent in terms of what they needed people to do to save themselves. That said, Brazoria County spokeswoman later explained to reporters that despite the danger posed by that levee breach, despite the urgency of the instruction to get out, the county didn't actually have any unflooded evacuation routes to which they could send people in the county when they ordered them to get out. So, you know, again, this is unsubtle, right? Get out is a direct command, whether or not it's followed by multiple exclamation points. But it, frankly, it's an abstraction if there's no means for you to get out, even if you want to try. Local officials now say 20 to 30 percent of all of Harris County is underwater. Harris County is gigantic. It's the county that includes Houston proper. Houston is a gigantic city. The only cities larger than it in the country are New York, LA, and Chicago. Then Houston's next. Houston is also m magnificently large in terms of its geographic area. It, it just has a gigantic, sprawling, widespread metro area. Uh, taken altogether, what's considered to be the Houston metropolitan region is an area that is literally bigger than the state of Connecticut, bigger than the state of New Jersey. And that part of Texas also happens to be not just a, a regional hub, not just a national hub, but a global hub for some industries that can be very dangerous in the face of natural disaster. The Houston area and the Gulf Coast, this part of the country that's being hit by this storm is a global hub for oil, petroleum, chemical, uh, gas, refinery infrastructure, plastics. Galveston Bay alone accounts for one quarter of all the capacity of petroleum refining in the United States. If you broaden that out to the refinery capacity, not just in the Galveston Bay, but in the Gulf Coast, the Gulf Coast has half the refinery capacity in the United States. Major refineries in this part of the country have been shutting down throughout the storm day after day over the last five days, including the largest refinery in the United States in Port Arthur, Texas, being shut down this afternoon in the face of significant flooding on site. Chemical plants as well have been shutting down over the past several days because of flooding and damage from the storm, or in some cases because their staff can't get there to operate the plants. 
Now, when it comes to chemical manufacturing, chemical storage, some of this industrial infrastructure isn't that easy to shut down. In, in, in some cases, when it involves chemical manufacturing and processing, sometimes shutting down itself can be a very dangerous thing. And that's why one of the things we are watching closely right now um, is a major chemical plant in Crosby, Texas. Can we show Crosby, Texas on a map, please? Crosby, Texas is part of, uh, part of Harris County. Uh, that's kind of a wide map there, <laughs> but you get the point. Um, there's a, you can take that down, that's not much help. Uh, Crosby, Texas is in Harris County. There is a chemical plant there. Uh, I don't know exactly, you can take this map down. Thank you, thanks. Um, the, the name of the plant, it's, it's run by a company called Arkema. I think that's how you say it, A-R-K-E-M-A. Arkema is a French company, a chemical company. It's headquartered near Paris in terms of its global headquarters. Their U.S. quarters are in Pennsylvania and King, King of Prussia. Uh, but in, in Crosby, Texas, which is in Harris County, they operate a relatively small plant there. Uh, according to Arkema's website, it produces organic quality peroxides. These are chemicals they say that are used to make acrylic resins and other plastics. This is stuff that goes into the manufacture of polystyrene, polyethylene, PVC. Arkema says its plant in Crosby, Texas has 57 employees when it is fully staffed. Well, they have been operating at a skeleton crew since the storm. And their plant in Crosby, Texas lost power in the storm like everybody did. They had planned ahead for that eventuality. On site, they had backup generators to keep the plant powered up. Unfortunately, on Sunday, those backup generators themselves got swamped. So that turned off the backup power as well. They've had no power source of any kind since Sunday at this chemical plant. After their backup generators got swamped, the company says they moved the chemicals on site into diesel-powered refrigerated containers. Um, but they now say the continually rising water at the plant has compromised those containers as well, particularly their ability to be kept cold. And the reason this is an issue potentially of serious concern right now is because whatever chemicals they use to produce liquid organic peroxides, those chemicals have to be kept cold. They must be refrigerated. Not just to keep them from spoiling, but to keep them from exploding. That's why there was backup power generation capacity on site. That's why they went to the trouble of moving these chemicals into diesel-powered containers after the backup power failed. If these chemicals can't be kept cold, if the diesel-powered refrigeration fails in these containers, there is a risk of a spontaneous chemical reaction, which would mean fire or explosion. The company put out a statement tonight saying this, quote, the situation at the Crosby site has become serious. In order to ensure the safety of our ride-out team, meeting their skeleton team, the riding out the storm, in order to ensure their safety, all personnel has now been evacuated from the site. Quote, we are working with the Department of Homeland Security and the state of Texas to set up a command post in a suitable location near our site. Uh, so again, they've got Homeland Security setting up a command post nearby. Local news is reporting that a one and a half mile radius has been evacuated around this chemical plant. I mean, the, and the company is being blunt about what's happened here. According to the company, refrigeration on some of our backup product storage containers has now been compromised due to extremely high water. Quote, our chemo is limited in what we can do to address the site conditions until the storm abates. They say we are monitoring the temperature of each refrigeration container remotely. At this time, while we do not believe there's any imminent danger, the potential for a chemical reaction leading to a fire or explosion within the site confines is real. Uh, so again, this is happening right now at one of just a gazillion chemical plants um, in the affected region. This one happens to be in Crosby, Texas, and there has been an evacuation one and a half miles around that plant. It, it is an additional complication for this disaster that Houston and this region is the most concentrated energy infrastructure in the world, as well as a hub for some of the most dangerous chemical and industrial facilities anywhere on Earth. And that's dangerous in the best of times. It's particularly dangerous now. So unlike a disaster in another part of the country here, you, in order to understand the potential impact, you have to keep your eye on the Houston Ship Channel and on the biggest refineries in the country and on the densest concentration of chemical plants in the country. And we gotta watch those dams on those western reservoirs and on the levees along the rivers. 
Local officials started to warn today about roads and bridges starting to fail. Today is the 12th anniversary to the day of Hurricane Katrina. Tonight it is starting to feel like a national test of whether we learned what we were supposed to learn from that disaster 12 years ago. Joining us now from Cleveland, Texas, is NBC News correspondent Stephanie Goss. Stephanie, thank you for being here. I really appreciate you joining us on a tough night. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. First of all, Stephanie, I know you've been, um, you've been on the road today. Uh, can, can you just tell us what you've seen today? First of all, where you are now in Cleveland, Texas, what things are like there, what you've seen, what, what your sense is of the scope of what Texas is dealing with right now? Sure, Rachel. You know, we had one goal today. And our goal was to go from Houston to Beaumont. Now, if you're not familiar with Texas, Beaumont is due east of Houston. And on a good day with the sun shining, it should take about a little over two hours to get to Beaumont. Today, we never got to Beaumont. And, and just to get out of Houston was an unbelievable trial. To go east, we first had to go all the way west and up north. And by the time we turned east, we were easily twice as far away from Beaumont as Houston is. Then we tried to go east and drop north. And that's where we wound up in a place called Plum Grove. And that is literally where the road ended. Mm. We had no chance of going anywhere because a nearby river had completely flooded. And we saw there a scene that we've come used to seeing in Houston, but is actually playing out all across this part of Texas. We saw rescue teams, these are local people with local boats on this river going in and rescuing people, bringing out families from this one community. We were told that there were about 500 families that they needed to rescue because the river rose so quickly and so high. This is an area of Texas that is basically marshland. And the people here get floods. They know that the water rises. But there is no one that we've spoken to who has been able to wrap their head around just the vastness of this disaster. Even the people that had the boats that were rescuing people, even the fire chief that we spoke to today was really stunned at how quickly that water rose. And now you have this storm moving east and the city of Beaumont that we couldn't get to, another city of 100,000 people, facing floods and evacuations tonight, Rachel. And Stephanie, you were talking about, we're seeing these incredible images of people just in private boats doing what they can for their friends and neighbors. Um, I have to ask if it's a well-integrated effort, if there's a place to bring people, particularly when it's not officials who are rescuing them or, or the National Guard who's rescuing them, it's just their friends and neighbors. Is there a place to bring people? Are there are these well-coordinated efforts? Do you get the sense that resources are being deployed in a way that um, that seems rational? I think people are doing the best that they can. And I think it really has to be, especially in the community that we are in today, this has to be a local effort. So it has to be neighbors helping neighbors, but mm. also churches opening up. We spoke to the police chief today, but rather the fire chief, and he actually told us, and this gives you an idea of just how big this flooding is. He said that they set up a shelter on Monday, Monday afternoon. Mm. They started piling people in that shelter and it was all pretty orderly. Well, Monday night, the shelter flooded oh. and it filled up and they had to scramble to get those people out of that shelter and up to higher ground to a new shelter where we found them today they were actually at a local church a sprawling thankfully local church and people had gathered there rachel nbc news correspondent stephanie gosk uh, on the road all day in houston and environs now in cleveland texas uh, stephanie uh, good luck getting to beaumont and um, thanks for being with us tonight. I really appreciate it. Thanks. I don't know if I'm going to make it. <laughs> well, I, we want to be, be the first to know when you do. All right, we got much more to come tonight, um, including, interestingly, a new question out of the Trump-Russia investigation. We've also got uh, a live look at what some of the shelter conditions are for our fellow Americans who are hunkered down tonight in some very crowded shelter locations in Houston. Uh, that live report coming up. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.